Welcome to the Movement Podcast, episode number six, Positive Expectations. I'm your host, Wilson, here with Cam, O, and JP, and we are the Shepherds of Myth. I want to preface this podcast uh, to cater that, just to let you guys know, this is catered to men. And if you're listening to this, uh, the purpose is not to offend you, but if we do, um, we're not necessarily going to apologize for that because uh, we are speaking truth. And if our truth offends you um, the, or upsets you, then, you know, just deal with it. Um, we are sharing our thoughts and beliefs, and if you're weak-minded, easily offended, uh, or closed-minded to personal growth, then stop listening to this podcast now. So you've been warned, and um, man, what's up, fellas? How's your week been? My week has been badass. Awesome. Like every other week. We're talking about positive expectations, right? Yes. I got positive expectations, and I got positive memories. So our week has been awesome. We've been rolling hard at the Brown House, as always, and uh, super, super productive with everything we're doing, Um, looking for a new house and just all kinds of different things going on with three boys. And as you guys know, uh, it is money in the bank, shorty what you drank every day. So what about you, O? It's a super productive week, honestly. Um, Mindset-wise, started 75 hard. For a day, realized I was a little bit tougher, need a little more pr- uh, preparation on a, on a food standpoint. One hard. No, yeah. <laughs> imagine that it's in the name. It's, it's actually hard. Wow. Um, but from a mindset perspective, just even day two, because uh, I got through halfway of day two, got sick with some stomach stuff, came home, and I was like, I have nothing to eat except cheese its and cookies. That's and not then, uh, on the program. It's not, yeah. it not a diet. Yeah, yeah. It's a seafood needed diet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was not going to work. So I was like, okay, we'll get paid Friday. We'll go shop and get more prepared, you know. But as far as is working out for the very first time without having to do it for a long time, not the very first time, first time in a long time, and then waking up the next day and feeling it, it's like, oh, oh yeah, you know. I, and then the weak, vo- the, the weak voices. So that post is where it came from. Was that that mm-hmm. time? And I was like, the weak voices start coming, dude. You don't have to get up man. two miles. You could do it at the end of the day after the workout. Don't worry about it, right? Yeah, but anyway, it was productive, man. It was good. I mean, there was a lot of energy behind it, a lot of good mindset. Even the sickness didn't really slow me down a whole lot. A lot of good funnel stuff at work. I'm pretty pumped. Rolling in the weekend's going to be good. Damn, they let you guys funnel at work? (laughs) Yeah, two story. (laughs) And done that since college. Two story funnel. Right? Two story funnel. Unbelievable. It takes a lot of duct tape. I thought I had a good week. (laughs) Sales funnel. Sales funnel. Uh, Obviously, I'm working for the wrong company. That's how I close so many calls. (laughs) (laughs) No, same same here, man. Uh, Great week. Another week to get better, man. Uh, for me personally, it was a, it was a good opportunity to stretch myself in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, I, I got, I got to see what the moon looks like, uh, working at night on the graveyard shift with some of my stuff that I do with my job. So, uh, you know, got to stretch myself from figuring out how to, uh, function and not sleep, uh, which is a whole nother mindset. You sleep really is for that. sissies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's whatever. Nobody died from lack of sleep. So That's right. Bad. You just fall asleep, right? You're not going to die. Asleep. You just fall asleep. They actually did a clinical study on that. Yeah, micro naps. Yeah, it's real quiet towards the end of that study. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, they would electrocute their college students to make them stay awake, uh, oh. and like I think they last four days, four or five days without zero sleep because they have to stay up the entire day for their college campus. And at the end of it, they would just freak out. Their body would just take over. And just they would, you could be electrocuting them, and they're just I'm out. Oh yeah, it's crazy. Well, your body. So you, I'm a firm believer in sleep. Trust me. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's uh. Sure. That's part of the whole getting better thing. You know, that's when you release all your growth hormone and your brain repairs itself and your body repairs itself. So truth um, or not though, five or six hours is enough. Yeah. Well, uh, no, it depends. So everybody's different. Everybody's different. Okay. Everybody right. is different with how much, uh, sleep you need. And it depends a lot about your activity level, your brain. I mean, to be honest with you, if you, if you actually are, are growing and stretching yourself and using your brain, you need more sleep to recover. Um, now that doesn't mean that you sleep constantly. It's better to, it's better to do a shorter night and, and then get a nap during get the day. Nap. Yeah. It's, it's actually better because, uh, Dana, you know, obviously she did the, uh, the psychology route. She did some studies and stuff. And, and I guess your natural, um, cycle is two hours on like it's sleeping and then you're, you're up for a little while and then you take another two hours and sleep. That's that's how it's like that's, almost like an eating cycle. Yeah, that's very, that's how yeah. your body is actually supposed to be. You so you like nap t- six times faster. a day, like you eat six times. a day. Right, you weren't designed to sleep for eight ten hours at a time. You were actually designed to sleep for a couple hours, like a, like dogs do. Like a dog like go lay down, take a nap, day. and then he'll get up and I do like his that. thing. That's you a, know, that's a good idea. 
So, but anyway, now, Albert now that Albert Einstein even actually said he would sleep uh, every, he would work for four hours, sleep for two hours. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just sleep faster. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that, that's yeah. So if you only have four hours, you just sleep fast. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, right. exactly right. It's yeah. the best but way to do it. When I worked night shift, I would I got myself to where I could only sleep. I would stay up till six and then sleep four hours, get up at ten, go to work by eleven, and I was yeah. great. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. like I had I'm more still good with five or six. Like, yeah, I mean, I I used to be able to do four and function fine. I'm like five or six now. Yeah, as long as I already know. Like this week, I've been getting up at like five thirty, five forty five, rolling hard until you know eleven o'clock midnight. It's great. Yeah, twelve. Go to bed at twelve. Wake at six. Yep. Two yeah. miles. Where you at? Yep. Yep. So kids are getting back into school. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. oldest oldest is in school now, so it's cool. You know, seeing what they're they're learning right now and kind of working with him on that. And actually getting to practice the growth mindset on your kids, you know, and yeah, stuff I'm like, oh, this is cool. actually hard. I'm like, dude, it's awesome. That's the, where you're going to make yeah. the most progress. Yeah. When it's hard, if it's I'm easy, you're in the wrong spot, our, man. Our oldest asked for a tutor this week, and I was like, praise Jesus. <laughs> he was like, it's hard. I was like, yeah, remember like three or four years ago when I told you you should probably pay attention because it's going to get harder. <laughs> like it's going to be actually be school, not just hanging out with your friends. Right. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. it's happening, isn't it? He was like, yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I remember when when my dad was wrong. Yeah. Right. You know, you yeah, that back one time. Like, yeah. yeah, I I'm bet him. I, I don't know if I think I told you guys this, but like six months ago, I bet him that I said when you when you're 25, about 25 years old, you're going to look back and you're just going to be so grateful for everything that I've been telling you. And if I'm wrong, I'll give you everything I own, which will be a lot by the time you're 25. <laughs> and he was like, "Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to get everything you own." I'm like, "It ain't going to happen, bro." <laughs> yeah. He's like, "There's no way I'm going to love yeah. everything you taught me." I'm just telling you, you will. Yeah, because right. I did it. Yeah, you won't. Yeah. You won't be the first kid to right, turn right, around right. and go. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? So yeah, but it's fun. The little one, we're we're uh, probably going to get him into some kind of mixed martial arts. We're going to go check it out tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow afternoon. Nice. Um, so yeah. you know, little introductory thing, and then. And the um the, the youngest one is already doing martial arts in my wife's stomach. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty hey, sure he's boxing her kidneys right now. Oh, uh, that kid, that kid does flips, man. I, I don't I don't know. It's it's a it's a little worrisome. Is um, he gonna come out like built like a brick shit house like your second youngest? I, 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 I don't know, man. Maybe so, worse. Maverick he's saying he's got more he's energy. Like bro. Dude, yeah. Maverick, you gotta be careful about the way I was reading something about how you name your kids. Yeah. Um, and they were talking about how important it is. Oh yeah, like it's not it's not just about naming them, but like you tell them all the time. Well, that's exactly they hear that and it it just it prewires them to say this is who you are and stuff. And and Maverick fully embodies his <laughs> right? name, you know, yeah. like when it comes to <laughs> stuff like that. Like he is yeah. he is a Maverick, like absolutely. But th- this other one. So we got to be careful. I might like mellow yellow or something like that. Like, I don't know what we're going to call it. Eeyore. Sloth. Eeyore. Eeyore. Absolutely. Hey, you go. Oh, no, bother. <laughs> you don't want them that slow. <laughs> Jeez. Well, our week was uh, just as productive as you guys are. Um, just a good time, man. We have been crushing it with work and then uh, honestly just got uh, launched another business for the, the family. Uh, my wife and her her friend or whatnot just started a new business and it's pretty cool just to kind of see because so my goal is to have uh seven sources of income by 2020 so we're on our fifth right oh, now. Yeah. so so looking to knock in about two more and, and, and we'll be right on goal you got the four months years. oh yeah yeah we got it so it's uh it's pretty cool though just kind of seeing where everything's going and then I just had a conversation with one of my um co-workers or whatnot uh, about doing some additional stuff so pretty pumped about where it's going so it's pretty excited that's awesome but um so today for the listeners i mean i know we can ramble on forever and just kind of catching up or what have you so uh, the reason why i wanted to talk about positive expectations is because i think there's a lot of negative people out there than positive i don't know if you guys agree with that but the uh, the goal today of the episode is to shed some light on how to stay positive and upbeat in the world where negative primarily prevails you know and uh Having positive expectations can really impact all aspects of life, whether we realize that or not. And the way we think about, you know, just any event uh, or circumstances before it happens or actually influences the outcome. Uh, you know, just like you and, and O, you probably could relate to that to coming into a sale or whenever you're you're going into uh, some kind of work environment or, or you're about to present something, JP, uh, on work and then also uh, Cam with your sales and stuff like that. I mean, you got to have that positive expectations because the outcome will change. So the power of the mind is usually not considered into the equation as to how much it weighs in on the actual outcome. Let that weigh in. That's huge, man, because I actually had a, a coaching conversation with a guy not too long ago, and he was like, dude, what are you, how are you doing what you do? I'm like, it's not magic. It's very practical. Mm-hmm. Before I go into every sale, 
I just, I, it's like saying, it's like a magical spell. I'm like, I'm, I said, you're the best salesman in the world. Everyone wants to buy from you. Your program. And yeah. dude, and that's it. I get out of the car. Do I really think I'm the best salesman in the world? It's not an ego thing. It's just hearing that. So I go in, like, I have that confidence. Like, these, it's done. Sales done. You know, it's, it's it. And you go in there. That way you, you do everything you need to do to close it. You know, you don't, you don't battle with these guys. A lot of guys are going in. They'll see an expert. They'll, they'll have a negative expectation walking up to a house or something. We're like, oh, these guys don't have any money. Oh, man. Dude, that's the worst. Thing. It's the same thing. You I've seen lost in car it. sales. Yep. Mm-hmm. Guy walks in and, and busted flip flops and holy shorts. And they're like, this guy ain't got any money. Sir, don't touch the cars. You know, right. there's YouTube videos out there of it. You know, sir, don't touch it. And the guy's like, yeah, I'd like to buy one of these in cash. You know? Yeah. And then it blows our minds. Like, ah, oh, shit, I did last loss of sale. Mm-hmm. So That's me, a, that would be a negative expectation, right? Let me ask you. So yeah. are you saying this while you're looking at yourself in the mirror if you can? No, or? I mean, I literally just hear myself say it. Okay. You know, okay. it's almost like an unspoken prayer, I guess, kind of. Mm-hmm. Like, it's become just natural for me. In the mornings when I do that. Okay. So in the mornings is, and, and, and my whole, re- I, was on, I was on Instagram for my whole region. And we made it kind of like a joke, like Candy was filming me through a mm-hmm. crack in the door. <laughs> like, you know. All right, man, we're going to get out there. We're going to do this thing. You know, and I'm like, who's the best salesman in the world? You know, pull myself up. And then I'm like, I look over, and I see her doing it. Like, she, she laughs and, what are you doing? But I do that. Like, that's a legit thing that I do is, oh, man, we got this. You know, all right, we're down this many. You know, we got to get this many. We need to do this. We got a new guy on the team. Team is held accountable for his quota, even though he's probably not going to make it. Mm-hmm. Not a negative expectation. He just doesn't know what he needs to know yet. Right. No sales background. Probably, statistically, not going to make his little. I've got to coach him. So, but in doing that, I got to make up his difference. I got to put that on myself. Not pressure. It's just something I like to do for the team. So, yeah, it's the same thing. So, boom, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Goal setting. Boom. Everything's in my mind. Everything's fresh. Everything's ready. When I leave my house, dude, I'm hyped out of my mind. Like I just snorted a whole line of freaking caffeine, caffeine pills. pills. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where you were going to go. With that. <laughs> caffeine, that wasn't pills. caffeine. That was a Xanax. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, dang it. Change direction. No, but I mean, it really is. But you have to have, no matter what the environment is, you got to have, like you're talking about, a positive expectation going in. This is done. This is a done deal. Yeah, and that's not, some people be hearing this and like, well, I don't work in sales. That's not the point. The, right. the point is it applies, you know, it applies to raising your kids. It applies to everything else you're doing. I mean, like the truth of the matter is if you, you better go into the day like that if you've got kids or go into the day like that if you have association of other people that you know any kind of leadership role or which we've talked about on every episode is as a man you do have a leadership role by by default you know Absolutely. so man why not speak into yourself nobody else is going to do it for you speak into yourself every morning every opportunity you get every break you get so you can be that person that you're talking about not just to make money which is great because uh, I agree with that 100% but to get results in every other area of your life. Yeah. You know, like right before I go to bed, I'm like, you're the man. Your wife wants to make out with you hard. Yeah. And then, you know, she does. Yeah. It happens. Does that work? <laughs> if I like look in the mirror, I'm like saying the same thing. I'm like, you're going to get laid at night, dude. Woo! <laughs> See, I wish it was that easy. <laughs> no, no, no. You guys got it mixed oh, yeah. up. See, I make, I make firm eye contact with my wife. Yeah, right? You're, you're a bad that. motherfucker. You're about to get laid at night. <laughs> she thinks oh, I'm talking she about can't, her. She can't handle yeah, you. Right. She just can't keep her hands off you. My wife's like, all right, this is weird. Stop. <laughs> Stop looking at me like that. Yeah, you go to bed. Go to bed. Roll over. Hold on. Let me take notes real quick. Can you say that again? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> No, I, I I couldn't I couldn't agree more <laughs> with that, and and, and kind of like Cameron was saying, like I'm obviously I'm not in sales, but uh, the the fact of the matter is you are in sales. Mm-hmm. Everybody yeah. is in sales. Yeah, dude. you're selling yourself at every point of your day. It doesn't matter if you're doing a presentation, uh, you know, for corporate executives. Um, it doesn't matter if you're doing a, a you know a process improvement from an engineering perspective, whatever it may be. You're selling you're selling what you got and. Um, I think, I think hard work, preparation and confidence breeds that, that optimism. Uh, when you know you did the work, it's, it's so much easier to be positive. Now, when you didn't and you didn't prepare, that's when you freak out. That's when anxiety Mm -hmm. sets in. That's when you can't be happy. That's when everything looks negative. And that's all you notice because ultimately your, your subconscious mind is what you program and that's what you see. What you focus on is what you see. When you're positive, positive people, it doesn't mean that negative shit it just leaves their lives and it's not around them. It's they don't see it. Mm-hmm. They don't care. Don't it's not important. Yeah. It's you know, the dealing you, with the circumstance. Yeah. 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 You don't let it doesn't affect me. Right. You know, mm-hmm. that sucks, dude. 
Mm. Most Next. people, I think it's more <laughs> yeah. perspective too. So like sure. if, you're, if you're stuck in that negativity or whatnot, it's, it's kind of hard to, to be ready if you're already focused on negative uh, output. Well, so. not, not only that, but it's, it, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in the action side of things. So Absolutely. if something, if something scares you or if you're, if you're lazy, if, if I'm, if I'm being lazy and there's, there's a day where I'm like, man, I really don't want to go out in that hot ass garage and start working out. Like, you know, I, I don't want to, you know what? Screw that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do it. Yep. Yep. Screw that. Yep. I'm going to go do it right now. Yep. Actually, I'm not even going to take my pre-workout. I'm going to do it right now just because I said that. I'm going to go do it right now. And then when you get done, you feel like an absolute beast. And the rest of your day, you know, is kind of like on the up and up. Yeah, let's go, dude. It goes back to what you were saying in that post, though. You know, it's like the weak voices. We call it God and devil, which I believe. Or you can call it just, you know, angel and devil on your shoulder, whatever it is. But there's that, that weak voice is not telling you not to do it. It's just telling you not to do it right now. Yeah, and that's right. why the action piece is so important because you have to act. You can't just... Talk your way into, yeah, I'm going to run those two miles later. You know, I'll do it later tonight when people are asleep. No, you better go right now. Yep. That's one thing that because of this, and I've had a lot of feedback from that because of our podcast, just small side note, is that people are starting to live more consciously and in the moment. Mm -hmm. Like what we're doing here, not to puff you, I'm puffing you guys up more than anything, but what we're doing here is making people more conscious. And that's something that's done for me. Mm -hmm. Just Mm -hmm. going back and listening to our stuff, I'm like, dude, when I hear that, in my own head, I'm like, two miles a Dude, it's night, man. You know what? Just take off work a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. You know, you're ahead, you're ahead of gold, man. You're good. Just do the two miles and you can take. Mm-hmm. Just call in. Take off early. Do the two miles and get home. Now, fuck that. I'm going right now. That's right. Exactly as right. soon as I hear myself, it's the exact same thing you're saying. As soon as I hear myself now say that, I mean, even something as small as like the trash is full, I'm like, I'll get it a little bit. No, dude. I'm like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm, I've got it. I'm right doing now. it right now. And you'll create a habit. Like yeah, you'll cre- yeah. it'll it'll not just a habit of one particular action, but you'll create this habitual nature in your in your person of doing that. So when you start recognizing those things, and then it, I mean, it gets to a point where you're like, you can't not do something. Yeah, <laughs> you right. know, like yeah. my wife will get on and be like, "Do you have to do that right this second? Yep. Yes, because I was just about to not do it. Yeah. Right. So I'm gonna do it right now. But when you when you when you're beast mode and everything like that, and you're overcoming that voice in your head that's like, it's okay to do it tomorrow. You know, that once you start overcoming that, you can't help but to be happy. Mm -hmm. Like you look back and you go, man, dude, I took out the trash today. I cut the grass today. I ran five miles today. And I didn't feel like doing any of that shit when I woke up this morning. (laughs) So I I won. And I did. I absolutely won. How can you not be happy? That's why you see people that are successful. You know, walking around with their chest poked out, going, dude, yeah, like, like they got to bounce about little victories all day long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. you're just kicking the devil in the teeth all day. So one thing you said was, (laughs) um, where you're always selling is the book 10x always talks about that either you're yep. selling someone on a reason they should or they're selling you on a reason they shouldn't yep. who's the better salesman so but but you're talking about different areas you're always selling dude you had to sell on a reason your wife should become your wife mm-hmm. oh, at yeah. some point or even at the very basis your girlfriend at the very beginning mm-hmm. you know where you like oh, i have all these benefits 401k and it's not like that but you, <laughs> there was a selling process yep. in, a, in a natural form of why she should be yours. I just well, wore tighter pants. And, well, yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's why it's so important to develop that confidence, right? Because right. the more confident of, of two people will always influence the other. Yep. It'll that's always work like that. true. Yep. Well, you got to prove yourself. And in being confident and, and having those things is that's action that you put in kind of in a, like a bank. And then all of a sudden now you're r- willing to, to, to collect the deposits, you know, yeah. and you have to you have to put in the effort in that account. Or if you don't, you just you have nothing to draw from. So whenever hit, crap hits you and you don't have those deposits made, it's it's going to be challenging for you to get through those, you know, challenges. Sure, and a lot of people like what you're talking about from procrastination mm-hmm. is yep. is is mm-hmm. just the, the I, detriment it to people's people's confidence and stuff. And the, and the thing about it is they're killing themselves and they don't even know it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. that that's the thing. You you procrastinate and, and that's and then all of a sudden three months down the road you're behind and stuff and you're depressed about things and you're looking at you know the the, the whole Eeyore thing and stuff like that and you're like <laughs> oh my god yeah. like, well it's the it whole sucks. like I think where people miss it is that they think it's either positive like really doing something moving in a positive direction or really going negative backwards what they miss is that negative is just not doing anything right. that's right yeah. that's negative you'll not, fall back yeah. you will fall back naturally indecision yeah. is a decision but they think if they if it, i mean and i don't know but I, I feel like a lot of people in society just feel like if they're doing nothing they're not really doing anything negative and that's 
completely inaccurate. Yeah. You talk about that slight edge. If you're not moving right. forward, you're going backwards. Yeah, there's, yeah. There, is, there is no there is no, yeah. stand, there is no standstill. There's a philosophy to that because we're we're made of water. So I mean, if you're not moving, you're yeah. stagnant. And what does stagnant water do? It smells Stinks. really bad. Yeah, yeah, it's horrible. Can you, you ever walked up to a creek that has eggs. has not been running for a while because mm-hmm. it's, it's a been of a drought? And that's what I think about every time that I don't make those decisions to say I want to move forward today. Good place you know? to find tadpoles, though. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Smell like it's a poop great, great So you guys <laughs> listening in, I mean, a positive mind is a powerful mind. Having a positive mindset toward life will grant you more zeal to life and success in the arenas you're pursuing. So today we're going to cover uh, how to develop a positive thoughts in negative situations. If you have a negative outlook, we're going to cover on how you can switch that mindset from a negative to a positive mindset. We're going to c- cover on how, you know, you can just... In every situation, be on guard, have a, uh, a strong mindset uh, through any of the negative thoughts that we're going to run into. So um, I guess some of the questions I'd like to ask you guys. Is, uh, so what are some things the, the listener can do? If it's like, Let's say this guy or a girl comes into this podcast, listen to this, and they are a me- negative mindset person. What do you feel like? What would you do in the action steps to steer them to positive or how to, can they, you know, take that negative mindset and switch it? I think naturally, depending on who you hang around, I think everyone in this room is, is more tending toward a positive mindset because we've been around each other so long now or we've been a part of each other's lives for so long now. Absolutely. I don't think that's common. I don't, I don't think that's a common case. I think, I think it, it's, and this isn't a judgmental thing like, oh, you're a negative mindset or, you know, people coming in are probably having a negative mindset. That's just, I think that's the average thing. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. is that people are tend to, um, and that this is a societal thing, just at a at a at a basis we'll go with is is oh man it's Monday negative already automatic you know instead of going how can I set the pace for the week today do people start that on Sunday night yeah. oh uh, that's a oh, great point dude, no oh, people, yeah. Saturday night they're like oh my god it's already Sunday right you know and people <laughs> do that dude mid I used to be like that in the middle of my vacation like oh shit it's already Wednesday mm-hmm. I got to go back to work Monday I'm only instead of being like <laughs> yeah, instead of being like Dude, it's only Wednesday. I got four more days off, dude. That's right? Legit. You know, I think coming into this, if you have a way to, if you're coming in and and you are a Monday person, we'll call it that. Uh, if you're a Friday Monday person, yeah, it's the weekend. Oh man, it's it's the start of the week. First of all, knock it off. And it, it really is that simple. It's as simple as me telling the the voices in my head, shut up. I don't mean voices are like crazy. I mean like you can take up the trash later. You can go on the run later. You can do this later. It's as easy as making one decision. And then keep making the same decision, right? How can I start the week? Or how can we set the pace for this week? How can we set the pace for the rest of the month? September 1st, we got guys on our team where come in. They're like, I got to do this all over again. September 1st. Right. Killed it last month. I got to do it all over again this month. <laughs> Screw that, dude. What did you do last month? How could you fix it? How can you make it better? How could you refine that process? You know, mm-hmm. it's the same thing here. If you're the cart guy that walks out of Kroger and you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> You know, Cold everything's up. full, you know, I need some help, you know, or that everything's guy's... spread out everywhere. Cause nobody puts their freaking <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. dude, I was, dude, I would just pop earbuds in man. Back when you still had the Walkman CD players when I was 16, I was like, please don't skip. You know, you're trying to stick it in the back Every of your time pants. You take a step. <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be shock proof. <laughs> <laughs> Electric shock. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's what I meant. No, but like, you know, I'm going to kill this dude. They're going to be, this is, this is my, you know, don't be the guy that's like, oh shit, I'm going to be out here all night. Absolutely. Dude, you're not. If you put on the right song, you know, mm-hmm. put the right song. It's the same thing. It applies to everything. Do you put on the right music and get to work? You'll knock it out all by yourself. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, oh, very motivating. <laughs> <laughs> How about that harmony? Right? Yeah, we missed our call. So my oldest. That, it's funny you said that because my oldest uh, yesterday evening was cutting the grass because he's old enough to do it. And as my dad told me, once you get to that age, I don't have to do it anymore. Like, why do you think we had you? Um, <laughs> Ooh, I love it. There's so many opportunities for you. There's so much you can learn from cutting the grass, legitimately. Mm, really Plus, is. I don't have to do it anymore. Um, but he normally can't stand it. I mean, but he he did yesterday evening. I was out at an event last night. This morning, I was taking him to school. We jumped in the car. I wanted to reinforce. I knew how much he hates it. And I was like, hey, man, the yard looks awesome. He was like, thanks. He's like, I just put my earbuds in, put some music on. I just kept going back and forth, back and forth, and it was over before I knew it. I was like, see? There you go. Like, you're starting to get it, man. You know? But it was positive reinforcement in his brain. It wasn't just focusing on, this sucks, I'm pushing the lawnmower, because we do push, because that's the only way you're going to learn. Yep. Mm-hmm. It ain't like riding. Well, I started to. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I mean, if you're riding, you're just like, that's just fun. Yeah. yeah. Like, cutting grass ain't fun. He's like, why do we have to, somebody said, why do we have to do it? I said, talk to Adam and Eve. 
that's exactly, <laughs> exactly right. why we have to do it. That's where it all stems. Yeah. yeah, it's the dumbest waste of time. I'm like, I get it. Yeah. What about you, Jim? So let me let, here. Let me let me so readdress how do you, how the do question. You, how do you take somebody who has a negative thought process coming into this, listening to this, mm-hmm. and what are some tips and pointers to say how do you can change that negative pro- thought process to a positive activity? Mm-hmm. Uh, absolutely, I, I, bl- I believe activity is, a, and and the reason I say activity and not action is because action is a singular event. Uh, activity is ongoing. Um, you, you should you should constantly be moving. Um, I, I'm a firm believer in like, what, what are you carrying in your bags? Right. So, uh, and you hit, you hit the nail on the head. Oh, whenever you're talking about, uh, the, the people that you're around and the, the positivity and, and, and just people that, that drive you, uh, rather than pull you back, because I'm going to tell you right now, if, uh, if you're, and we talked about mindset and if you guys haven't heard that episode, uh, you're, you're missing out. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an outstanding episode. Episode number four was great, uh, from, from that perspective, but People, if you're hanging around with people with the fixed mindset, they're going to hold you back and they will never want you to go beyond where they're at because it makes them conscious of where they're sitting. Crabs in a bucket. It's yeah. crabs in a bucket. Absolutely. So I'm a firm believer in action. It's a five minute rule thing for me. If, if it takes less than five minutes, I'm going to do it right now. Mm-hmm. There is no later. There's no scheduling. Now, if it's going to take you two and a half hours to do it, you're going to have to set that time aside and probably schedule it. Mm-hmm. But if it takes you five minutes, do it now. Um, because what I mean by what you carry in your bags is when you, when you get drugged down, it's generally because people have so much on their minds that they have to do that they haven't been doing or whatever it may be, um, that, that they start to get a little bit depressed. They get behind the, the, the eight ball and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, for me personally, I, I'm a checklist type of person. So what I, what I would tell somebody to do if they ever, if they ever get in that, that kind of mindset of negativity and stuff, change your association, get around people that are, that are positive, that are moving, that are trying to do something better and then set a checklist for yourself. If it takes less than five minutes, it doesn't really need to be on your checklist. Just go freaking do it, but set a checklist and and little wins every day. And I, I don't care if it's make your bed, you know, read for 15 minutes, this and that, like just get. 10 things throughout the day that you can check off every day and do right off the bat. Gotcha. You know, so I, and I, I believe personally, when you start getting those little wins, like Cam, like you were saying, you get those little wins, it'll start to change your mindset and you'll start to go, you know what? I'm kicking ass today. Absolutely. Well, and that was, you know, you mentioned reading in there is one of the things that was what I was going to say as far as what can you do to change to a positive mental attitude? Cause I love what you guys said. And I, the, the activity versus action thing is mm-hmm. awesome. Um, but read like freaking read, man, like read every day, read something good. And I'm, and we've said this before, we're not talking about Harry Potter. That's great. If you need to be entertained, but we're talking about personal development, mindset, growth, leadership, whatever it is, but, but associate yourself with somebody that has wisdom and has put that on paper and has taken the time to share things they've learned on paper. And that it it can't help, but make you more positive. It has to, because We've said this already, you know, negative is automatic. So you have, you can't just not be negative that it doesn't work that way. You have to intentionally be positive. The way that you intentionally be positive is you intentionally put good in. And that's through what you're reading, through what you're listening to podcasts, audios, whatever it is, through what you're watching. You know, the people you're associating yourself with is not just the people, but it's what's coming out of their mouth. So all those, your, your sense gates, everything they're taking in is taken in positive because it is combating the negative. Mm-hmm. It's not just a don't be negative. It's, it's a, intentionally be positive. It's a, it's yeah. a sense of dilution. That's, yep, that's a exactly great right. point. So if you put cyanide on a, a, a tablespoon and you just take it directly, it's going to kill you. But if you put cyanide, yeah, but if you put cyanide, a drop of cyanide into a pool and then you jump in the pool and you take a glass of the, the, the pool water and you drink it, you're, you're not going to die. Yep. Um, same thing like what you just said. Yep. That's a great point. Yep. I mean, you dilute the bad because it's not going away. Like we just talked about positive people still encounter negative situations Absolutely. and negative people. But that, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to no, you're fine. That, that overlaps what you were saying though. It's like, it's sure. an activity. So like the, that intentional diluting is, is activities, mm-hmm. you know? Absolutely. And then for most of us, I believe it's, it's on, I have it even to this day. I've been reading for years. I still have a reminder on my phone every day. It's not like I'm going to forget. I need to read, right. but I still have it go off every day. Read. Yep. It's the good, yep. it's the good voice. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. the good voice reminding you on your phone. Like sometimes the phone though is like that, that vibration is good and bad. Do it. <laughs> yeah. So you guys were talking about voice. positive association. I, I remember my mama used to always tell me, she said, you hang around fleas, you're going to get fleas. No, and hang I ra- hang around dogs. Fleas. You're going to get fleas. No, I always, you hang around fleas, you're going to get fleas. 
Okay. Is what like she that. always said. That's her. That's her Polish it's way Wilson of saying. It's her Polish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's from Chicago. Yeah. Love you, mom. Chicago. But it, it did mean like I mean if you yeah if you kind of think of that in 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 general you you're gonna get them if you hang around them. For so sure. I mean if you can that was the one thing coming into this kind of reflecting on my life of like where I've come from. Uh, you know, going into a mentorship role or going into uh, accepting mentorship in my life. I wasn't necessarily negative, but I did have the outlook on life as always going into something expecting the worst. So I never was let down because I like being positive. I liked being uplift, uplifting or, or in that, you know, what you guys call me as a golden, golden retriever or whatnot. I like that mentality of just always ready to roll and ready to have fun. And uh, to me, every time that a challenge would come up, I would face it, you know, like the, the best of us. But at the same time, if I didn't, if I knew I wasn't going to succeed or potentially not succeed, I just expected the worst results so that I wasn't let down. And I didn't realize that was a negative outlook on life. It's not necessarily positive. So, so people out there, the only reason why I share this is because this is my, that's like how I was. It's not good. You know, I remember you called me out or Paul, one of, uh, one of the guys that I've been able to be mentored by is saying, why would you have that kind of outlook? You always want to have a like I'm going to win it, and no matter what happens, it's gonna we're going to succeed. And I never really thought of that until I saw a different perspective. Yeah, so, and and, and the right. thing about it is you don't you, you don't you don't have to listen to that and say, oh, I'm going to succeed. Like it's some kind of naive thing. You know you're going to succeed because you're not going to stop until you do. Right. You might fail on the way there several times, but you're not going to stop until you do succeed. And part of the part part of to your point, and I think which is very important, and 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 I miss this whenever I answered it was. Your responsibility is to be contagious from a positive perspective. Oh, absolutely. Show the bounce. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you can walk into a room of five Eeyores and you can <laughs> have some bounce about you and be pumped up about life and, and walk in there. And those Eeyores might move. If you're Tigger. Yeah. If you're taking, you're going to yeah, turn yeah. Eeyore at least into Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. There you exactly. go. Nice. Get him moving, you know? Well, that, just like my coach used to say, man, I may not always win, but I never lose. I learn. Right, you know, and that's the mind, going to some of that like that kind of mindset. You can't lose, but you have to believe that. Oh yeah, you yeah. you have to you have to tell yourself that enough to where you believe it, and the only way you're going to believe it is through confidence of of activity. I mean, and activity breeds confidence. Confidence breeds belief. Belief, and that cycle that continues to happen over and over starts to program your subconscious mind where you because. If you don't know anything about your subconscious mind, like that controls everything you do. Mm -hmm. your you can act like you're positive all you want to, but if your subconscious mind is wired negative, you're gonna you're gonna be inherently negative. So creating that cycle is is really gonna reprogram your subconscious subconscious mind to where you you can you, you're gonna be a positive person by default. Mm -hmm. And I've heard, and I, this may be biblical. I'm not sure. There's probably some version of it is, but like your your tongue is like a rudder. Right. And that's, you're talking about programming your subconscious mind. And, you know, we, I don't know how deep we want to get into this, but mm -hmm. the way that you do that, the way that you program is not just by the activities and the actions that you do. It's the speech. It's kind of, it's that whole thing you were talking about. I'm the greatest salesman in the world or, you know, whatever it may be. I'm the best dad. I'm the best father. I'm the leader of my community. I'm all those things. It's saying it out loud to yourself all the time. And it goes, it's that whole dilution thing. The biggest way to dilute the negative and then create a positive subconscious is speech, 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 speech. The only way you're going to speak positive is if you're reading positive, you're listening to positive, you're watching positive, you're associating with positive, all those things. And what's to, in is going to come out. And to that point, you have to protect all your sense gates. Mm -hmm. Everything plays a role and associations first. And then second, what you say, and, and you might think it's hokey if you're listening to this going, what am I going to, I'm going to speak to myself in the mirror. Yes. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah bro. Are. Go and in, go into your mirror and speak to you and say whatever you think that you should say. Hey, good I, but personally, I would yeah. be like <laughs> positive reinforcement and say that you are worthy. You love you. You know, that's hard. I remember the first time I did that, dude, I brought, it brought tears to my eyes because I didn't really think I felt, I wasn't, I didn't feel good about myself. I thought I was a piece of shit, just to be honest. And coming into a, uh, someone who could come in and it was because I was allowing other defeats and other other association with my family, with my upbringing, different things just kind of played in a role of like I was putting on a facade of being this positive mental person because everything around me was just chaotic and, and nonsense. Mm -hmm. So I put this on because I didn't want to fall into the same rut. Does that make sense? Yeah. But I didn't know how. And then I had to get into somewhere, some association to say, okay, this is how it really is and what it looks like to be positive all the time, which is pretty cool. Um, 
So on that, I want to give uh, give two, one to two examples at least of a negative situation that you guys encountered, and how you were positive through it, or what you did to get out of the. If you maybe got in the trap of starting to think negative, how do you got out of it? You kind of alluded and came up with some of the different stories, but give me something that you guys um, come to first thing comes to mind. I'll just. It's not necessarily the most important thing, but I think it's very important um, for us and our family is um, through business. Um, I've you know been involved with this different entrepreneurial endeavors, and you know, the truth of the matter is you fail a lot when you do that. I mean, you fail a lot as an employee too. It's just not your ass on the line necessarily. But the thing that I have found that whenever I just you know took one to the chin or whatever it was was exactly what JP just said is like immediately take action immediately. Like, and it is the most rewarding thing on earth to get kicked in the face and then within minutes go out and get a victory. Like that's better than just getting the victory without the kick in the face mm-hmm. to me. Cause it's like, I mean, you're like at your lowest point of that particular area of your life for a second. And you can either sit there and you know, like, like roll over and wet on yourself and cry yourself to sleep, or you can immediately take action with a different, and we're going to talk about grit uh, on an upcoming episode, but with a different type of, um, there, it's almost an emotional drive that is just like, I will not be defeated kind of mentality. And if you go do that immediately, then the results you get from whatever that action is, depending on the business or whatever the situation, the results are usually like phenomenal mm-hmm. because you've like dug deeper down in your soul for, for whatever it is. And, and I've done that, you know, I've done that with where I've worked with people and people just absolutely failed me on a partnership or something like that. And then I immediately went out and created a new relationship uh, that was stronger and better and more long-term. And man, that is a freaking win. And I mean, I just, I feel phenomenal with stuff like that. So helps your self image too. hundred percent. Right? Yeah. Cause you realize it, it had nothing to do with you. It was just, so basically you're saying pussy. don't go home on a defeat. Never. Never go home on a defeat. Never go to bed on a defeat. Like, figure out some way to get a victory before you close your eyes, for sure. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. Um, that's almost like, it's like, don't go to bed angry at your wife. It's the same thing. Don't go, go, to, don't go to bed angry at yourself, you know, for, oh, yeah. do something. Win. Do, hit, hit those two miles and get a win real quick. Do a push-up or something. Yeah, yeah. dude, for real. Uh, for me, man, it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> JP. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Can't wait till we start live recording. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, man. <laughs> if you all, if you Perfect. could have seen that. that Get a like win. Victory. victory. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that was a pull-up, I think. Yeah, Leave that to your so. imagination. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Different kind of pull-up. Uh, <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, I think for me, as far as... <laughs> it could be a... See <laughs> you good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> go go back to you. <laughs> to go back to you too, it could be yeah. a, a negative situation or an environment. You could have been in a negative environment. Yeah. How did you seek yourself to get out of that in, in that in negative environment too? Um, a couple of my buddies have uh, recently started in the same um, profession as myself, and they've hit some more difficult areas than I have. I, I think the area that I work in is a, is a phenomenal demographic, um, and when. They have been sent to different demographics uh, towards a larger city that may not have more exposable income. Um, that's the mindset they're going into it with. Mm-hmm. And we had some conversations where, um, and I was like, "Dude, you just you just can't you can't go into that environment where I wouldn't let myself think that way." And I tell them all the time, "Like, dude, same thing I told you guys. I'm the best salesman in the world. Everyone's gonna buy. From you. I don't care what your house looks like. I don't care what your car looks like. I don't care what you look like. You're gonna buy. You know." And that's just the mindset I have. I don't care where I am. You could drop me in the middle of freaking Louisiana, Swampland, Louisiana. Somebody will buy something. I, I don't care if it's a Snickers bar out the trunk. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's oh. actually probably a higher percentage sale, right? <laughs> right, there. right. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, like, and I don't obviously don't sell that. I don't sell that at all. But the, the thing is, it, it doesn't matter. I've coached them. I've tried, you know, because that's a difficult um, mindset to overcome for someone who's not used to getting rejection rejection went away a long time ago when I joined a business with you guys through the different entrepreneurial enterprises we did. And I got used to telling no or crazy or whatever, you know, was I was like, whatever, dude, screw you. You know, stay the way you are, I guess, you know, whatever. So going to this, it was like, I'm already used to no. Are you kidding me? Like, this is easy. Right. <laughs> you said no. Okay. You keep paying that, whatever. Bye. You know, so, but, but so not everybody's used to that. Right. You know, and that's something I realized was 
oh man, you know, I just, they sent me over to to this part of town, and um, you know, I just couldn't get anything, dude. Oh no, it's been a whole week, and they, I've been this town. Like, dude, it doesn't matter what part of town I go to, I'm gonna sell something, and that's every time. It doesn't matter where I go, I'm gonna sell something. That's good. Well, you are always in this part of town. It's easy. I'm like, dude, no, no. But I tell you what, I preached that because I went through it already. Mm-hmm. My first couple weeks, I was kind of sent back and forth between the larger part of town and where we are now, and one of the suburbs, we'll say. And I experienced that. You know, I went a couple days with with some rejection, and I wasn't used to it. I had some early success, so it was something I didn't used to. But that was a conversation I had to have with myself and convince myself to get over before I could try to convince someone else of it. So it's not a thing like, well, you know, I'm, you're just telling other people that, you know, but you can't do it. That's not true, man, because I've sold as many times as I've gone out to other areas, I've sold at least something in every single area. So no one can tell me like, Oh, you can't do it. This, I've already proved it wrong. I've already done it. You know? Mm-hmm. So d- d- if you're, if you have a job where you're working in different demographics in different areas, you can't go into that thinking I can't do this here or, you know, Oh man, you look down at your work order. Oh man, I'm going there. I'm definitely not going to be a waste of time. You know, no dude, no, you're going to send me there. Okay. Okay. Challenge accepted. You know, okay. that, that's exactly how I approach it. But that's a it's a, that was a challenge at first because like oh man dude that's a crappy part of town you know, but now I just think of it like, okay, this is how it's gonna be today. Okay, okay, I got you, we got you, I got you right here. And then I walk out of there. Hey, just got five lines. And everyone's like, what? How did you do that? I'm like, magic. About those caffeine. Yeah, caffeine. I was about to <laughs> say, snorted you. that caffeine pill for a minute. <laughs> Keep saying that. I'm like, hey. Uh, you, so I, I guess I'll, I'm, I'll probably go with a, a, a different direction. Um, if you have kids, uh, they'll they'll make you they'll make you weak in a good way. Um, soften mm-hmm. up somebody who's been pretty hardened. Uh, some of, some of my my upbringing hardened me a lot. Um, just just from you know like like you said, you hear no enough, or you get you get hurt enough, you start to kind of close off a little bit. But your kids really really fillet you, like they open you back up. Sure um, but specifically, um, I, I remember um, actually you know. We're, in business with you guys. I was actually, um, down in Chattanooga. I was traveling back from Chattanooga and, uh, stopped at my favorite restaurant in the whole world on the way up. And, Taco uh, Bell. Uh, Taco Bell. Oh, Taco Bell. <laughs> Shout and, out Taco uh, Bell. I don't yeah. know why I even asked that question. <laughs> yeah. Taco Bell. Uh, that's my vice. Um, but I'll, I'll never forget my phone rang. It was my wife and it's just, you know, normal routine kind of stuff. Like I was answering the phone. Hey, um, she was beside herself. Like she falling apart, just crying. I'm like, Oh my God, like what, what's going on? Well, at this point in time, uh, Maverick was about a year old. Um, and, and my wife was just absolutely just falling apart. I'd never heard her act like this and stuff. And she couldn't even get words out and stuff. And I was like, Oh my God, what's going on? Like, I need you to tell me what's going on, you know? And the guys that were with me, I'm like, get in the car. We're, we're on the road. Like, I didn't even know it was happening yet. We'll come to find out. She found a, a large mass under his arm. Um, uh, you know, and, and when you're away from your family, that's a really shitty mm. situation to be in when you hear about stuff like that, you know, cause I, c- I couldn't hug my wife you know, I couldn't be there to, to comfort her. So the, the whole way, you know, I, the only thing I knew to do was speak victory. Like it's, it's good. It's fine. He's strong. He's a strong child. Mm. More than likely it's something that's, you know, that that's benign. It can be removed, you know, whatever it is. Um, you know, she was freaking out, but it's for me personally, it was an extremely negative situation, but it's amazing how you can you can be that strong positive anchor when you don't have a choice like that's right. that, it's the only choice i had i mean what was i going to do oh my god you know and then my my wife probably would have had a heart attack right, right. right. you know i didn't i didn't have a choice you so had to be the anchor. so yeah, yeah so for me personally that that helped me develop that was one of those challenges that i firmly believe god put in my life to make me stronger and it was a conversation i had with my wife there's the there's reasons that these things happen God gives his biggest struggles to his strongest soldiers. I believe mm-hmm. that that stuff happens. Um, so when you, when you think about stuff from those, those terms, it pulls you out of negative environments. Cause it's like, how can I get stronger in this? Cause I can either sit in a happy, you know, in the ball pit at McDonald's and be happy and not go anywhere, you know, or I can be in the struggle over here and then, you know, which I, I, I would never want that to happen again, um, obviously, but what, what was, what made it even worse was finally my wife has calmed down, a little bit. We got a doctor's appointment, stuff like that. We're going to Vanderbilt Children's Medical Hospital, you know, the the best place we could possibly take him, you know, whatever. 
Um, we get in there. They send us to, I think it was like the fourth floor or something like that. We get in the fourth floor, and it is full of kids sitting in there that all are bald and going through chemo treatments and stuff like that. Oh, and geez. I'm talking about, oh, man, like I wanted to fall apart. Mm-hmm. But my, I saw my wife get weak in her knees and stuff. I'm like, look, something's wrong. We're not supposed to be on this floor. This isn't where we're supposed to be at and stuff. So we walked up to the counter, and I said, um, is 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 my son's name on 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 the list in here to to come in and stuff like that and and she was looking at it and she was like what are you guys here for and stuff and we're like we're just you know getting a, a bump looked at and stuff like that and she was like no his name's not on the list you're probably supposed to be on the fifth floor and I looked at my wife and I said see I told you like it's all good everything's good so long story short uh turned out great my you know my little one's a champ uh went through surgery you know they put him under which is another scary situation anytime you put a kid that young under um, you know, you, you don't know if they're going to wake back up, you know, kind of thing. So scary situation, kind of, you know, cut it open and stuff, took it out. It ended up being benign, no issues or anything like that. So no long lasting effects. He doesn't have to go through, um, you know, anything from it, but it was one of those things that really challenged my ability to stay positive and strong, you know, in a situation. Cause I want to break down, like that's my little dude, mm-hmm. you know, but I didn't have a choice, but it made me stronger because it made my wife stronger too. Like she handled it like a champ too. I mean, she, she got to where you could tell. She had many opportunities after that that night to just fall apart. Absolutely. Can I make a point on that? I'm glad you went that direction with that because that's sure. one. You know, thanks for sharing that because I know a lot of people can relate to similar situations and maybe even worse ones. Um, but staying, you know, staying positive in those times and and kind of getting back to the core of what we are, shepherds of men, and and how important that is. I mean, the truth is, your wife. I mean. I can tell you, my wife, as soon as something goes wrong, she looks at me like immediately, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes if I'm in another room or outside, as soon as something goes wrong, she calls my name. Right. And there's even times where I'm like, what am, I mean, why are you yelling at me? Like, (laughs) you know, but what I realize is that she finds, she finds confidence there. Mm -hmm. She finds strength and security there. Um, our little guy, not nearly as significant as what you were just talking about, but our, I mean, he was 17 months old, whatever, just. I mean, full head of steam, ran right through the baby gate, just all the way down the stairs, mm-hmm. rolling just. Duh, 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 duh. She freaks out, right? And but it was one of those things where it's like, if you've done it enough, if you've prepared yourself and you've put enough positive in, and you realize what your responsibility is as the husband, as the father, as the leader of your home, then when that stuff happens, there's no, there's there's no. Um, you keep it together. You mm-hmm. keep your cool. You know. So while she, I mean, my wife was screaming she was crying rightfully so and it's i mean it was it was a scary situation but you're you're there to keep it from being scary so not only was i keeping calm for my kid who needed that but also my wife because she was probably she is a lot like your wife like she would have had a freaking panic attack if i had started freaking out if she looked at me and didn't see confidence she would have lost it and so to get back to you know just kind of the core of building up men like dudes you got to figure out a way to make that a part of your lifestyle. You got to figure out a way to make that a part of your being where people, I, I mean, it's a scary thing. I mean, it really is a scary thing, but it's what you're called to do. You know, like when it hits the fan, people should be able to, we talked about that um, episodes coming out soon, um, standing in the gap. People should just be able to look at you and go, everything's going to be all right. Yep. You know? Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. You got to be the anchor, man. Yep. And, and, and some of it, some of it comes down and I get in trouble for this a lot. Um, it, it comes down to humor. Mm-hmm. Like for me, I mean, in situations <laughs> yeah. like that, I'm really, really, really bad about dropping a poor dad joke in a, in, in a bad time, you know, and my wife will turn around, look at me and go, really? And I'm like, took your mind off of it, didn't right. it? For just Dude. a second, it took your yeah. mind off of That's it. That's what it's all about. So yeah. the same thing, I mean, with everything that happened with Eric that time, and, and I don't know if I'm in the right mindset to even talk about that situation yet, because um, every time I think about it, it pisses me off, but when he was laying there and his whole face is shredded open by that stupid ass dog and the stupid ass owner, we'll go with that. Um, th- th- I'll tell you what though, the guy did step up and took care of all the bills. So props for him for all that either way. But I'm, but I'm my doing candy did not hold it together. So I had to, and <laughs> man, that was tough, dude. That was super tough. I, you don't ever think about stuff happening like that. And just like with Matt, you don't, right. you know, everything's supposed to be solid, dude. You know, nothing happened to us really when we were growing up, you know, this, that we remember that we, yeah. just, like, yeah. just like our yeah. kids. Ain't blocked, remember right? stuff yep. either, right? But I mean, he's laying there. He's, you know, he's still, we haven't, he's been sewn. His face has been sewn up yet. I'm like, you know how badass he's going to look with these scars and look fucking awesome. Yeah. And she's like, 
I hate you. <laughs> Did you say something? I'm like sorry, about, I don't know the deal. Did you say something like, like women love scars? Uh, yeah, I was like, dude, yeah, yeah. scars, yeah. 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 chicks dig scars, yeah. baby. Absolutely. They're gonna dig him, you know? Yeah, yeah dude. That, that's I mean, the was... truth, though. And and to that to that point, though, when you get into some of those situations, you know, as a man, don't be too private. Like, don't don't necessarily lean on your wife because she's got enough on her in that situation, especially when it comes to like their own child and stuff. It's hard on them. But don't don't be too prideful to to reach out to to one of your boys and say, hey, dude, listen, like I just need somebody to talk to, like this is this is rough on me, and I'm not trying to put any kind of negative on you, but I need somebody to talk to just to let stuff out because. But don't do that to your if, uh, you. Yeah, yeah, you need that outlet. Yeah, for oh, sure dude. to reinforce your yourself. Wife. But don't show that card no. in front of your wife. Don't don't, don't, don't take garbage on your wife. Don't put no. on somebody that's not you know. Yep. <laughs> Try to rein it in when I called you for all that, dude. I thought we were about to kill somebody. No. I thought me and you both were about to go kill somebody. I'm like, all right. And I hung up yeah. the phone. Dean was like, what happened? I said, somebody's about to die. I yeah. don't know who it is, but they're about to die. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, long story short, guys, and I know that that's probably, that's a story we can touch on another time just for relatability. Um, for we, we could, I mean, that story is about an hour long. So in short, I got a phone call uh, that my son had been attacked by a pit bull uh, while my sister was watching him. Uh, it's the only time I've ever seen my wife completely speechless and in, in shock. Uh, from mental and emotional standpoint, um, told my sister she was doing the same thing. I just told her to shut the fuck up. We're on our way, and you get in the car, kind of thing. And I was just staring straight ahead, and it started to get to me like shit, you know. So I called Josh. I was like, "Yo, I need you." I don't even think we talked. It's probably been a couple of months since we yeah. even talked. And I was like, yeah. "Dude, who can I call?" Like, I need somebody. And I was like, "I don't know how I'm gonna react if this guy shows up. I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen. It's his dog, his responsibility, my kid." At the time, my sister's responsibility. And I was like, I don't have a lack. I need, I need one of my boys. And <laughs> Josh <laughs> said, you're the wrong hospital. You know, we, they wouldn't even let us leave the one hospital until he was stabilized. When we got there, everything was, you know, he was fine. Everything showed up good. And But the point is, man, like that was, you got to have a go-to. Yeah. And I held it together. I'm going to be honest with you. I had everything together. I was like murder mode. I talked to Josh, started talking about it. And, you know, and of course, calling people on the way, like, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, I don't know who he is until we weren't there. I was flying down this road, dude. I mean, and making phone calls the whole time, one arm on the wheel. Ridiculous. I mean, if you're a cop and you're listening, I definitely wasn't doing that. But uh, <laughs> it's completely legal. Ten and two, uh, maybe. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. ten, ten, and ten and two, two. speed limit, yeah. maybe a mile an hour Hands below. free. <laughs> yeah, hands, yeah, using the Bluetooth, no worries. Uh, no, but, and I'm joking about it, but man, that was the craziest fucking night of my life. No, I mean that was the it was forty eight hours all one day. I mean, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. like, and now he's just a freaking wrecking ball. I don't, nothing can hurt that kid. He is an absolute yeah. Tasmanian. Yeah, he is. You Tasmanian. know, we'll go full into that some other time. I'll probably do a separate audio on it. But yeah, you got to have that rock, dude. You got to have. It's not a dumpster thing where you bitch to somebody, but you got to have someone where you can. Un, I don't even want to say unload, but someone that relates to you in a positive aspect. I know Josh would, anything I go to Josh with, he will correct me if I go down the wrong path mentally. Mm. Like, that's not the way you need to think about that, you know? Go ahead. And I think uh, for a point of clarity is like, not that person that you can call and bitch with each other about the same thing or yeah. complain or gossip or whatever. Cause a lot of people be like, Oh, I got my, I got my friend that I call and I'm telling what's going on and we can both be mad about it together. That's not the point. The point is to have somebody that you can call that can say, dude, it's going to be all right. It's gonna be all right, man. We're good. Yeah, that's you exactly know? what Josh said. I got you, bro. Where do you need me to yeah. be? Yeah. And I'm like, so, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm sorry to bother you. Yeah. This happened. I, I just need you, bro. It's all good. I'll put him in the trunk. But <laughs> <laughs> yep. We'll find out where to bury him. Yeah, what, you, yeah. You want me to put him in the trunk? <laughs> <laughs> got some concrete, some quick mix. <laughs> well, thanks yeah. for we'll get this taken care. I just haven't been installing a basketball court anyway. Yeah. So yeah. I'm yeah. Gonna, yeah. Got right. quick, right? Thanks for uh, being vulnerable uh, in this moment of just kind of being transparent, telling people about your life, true life situations. And, and us, and just to be quick, um, my wife and I, we, we struggle to have our first son. And you talking about on and off, on and off every single day, like the whole month, you know, you, you're trying, and then all of a sudden, bam, it happens. And it's like, nope, not today. And that entire roller coaster of emotions that you had to be mentally stable for, luckily, and we'll talk about this because I want to ask this question, is like where does your positive source comes from, you know? And for me, it's my faith. And I had to continue to positively say to her, it's like, hey, it's all good. It's all in God's timing. He'll He'll bless us with a child. And, and sure enough, he's blessed us with a phenomenal child. And it's really cool to see that. And another, you know, mindset that will just alter you like crazy is having a lot of debt, living outside your means almost. 
And for mm, seven to eight to almost 10 years of my life, I, I had, I lived outside of my means, like literally, you know, borrowing money from other people to pay another bill and just floating money all over the time, you know, tr uh, credit card transfers so much. So for those who are listening, this is very transparent is I had over $80,000 in credit card debt Lord. and we were debt free from that $80,000 credit card debt because of positive decisions, uh, the act, mental actions, and then having a mentor in your life to help you what you just talked about, steer you in the right direction. And mentally, physically, emotionally, uh, financially, it's huge. And finance is the root of most all, all of uh, arguments in a family anyway. Man, you walked by the bank and the silent alarm went off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they knew I was right. He was just a money vacuum. Shut him down. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> so it was, uh, it was bad. It's, that's, that's my personal, you know, and through that deal, I had to be the rock. I had to go. I had to tell my wife that we, we were actually losing, but I had to say, we're winning, baby, every day. We're good. We're got it. I'll, I'll make it happen. I, I even gave her the, the reins to pay for the bills. Like, let her just take over because she was just trying to help. And I was like, here you go. And then literally the first month she's crying, like hysterically, like, how do you do this? this is, we're so much in debt. You know, she didn't know what to do. Yeah, and I was like, make a point, though. figure it out. You know, I was honey, like, can you ah. handle the bills? <laughs> oh, my I mean, God. Right. For me, I just was so like, this is beyond, this is below me. I'm, I'm, I'm up here. We're going to make it. Yeah. I, I see the future in hand. So I was like, I'm, I got this. So anytime I took it over, I was like, whatever, you know, take, do what I do. And, and it was good. So, I mean, that's a, a good solid you know, uh, deal. So. But we share that stuff. And, and like you said, yeah. with the vulnerability side of things, because I think there's a lot of people out there and I've been guilty of it at times where I feel like I'm the only one. Right. And, and you're not. The fact of the no. matter is if you get around the right association of people that are moving in the right direction, everybody has problems. Some people act like they live a Facebook life or an Instagram life and they don't have any issues and stuff, which they're full of shit. Mm -hmm. I wish people had to post what was actually going on in their lives. Like you know? required to post your day. Yeah, like yeah you got to post <laughs> yeah, different yeah, aspects of, of your day and, and be truthful about it. But like the thing about it, you're not the only one. Mm -hmm. Like everybody out there, I don't care if they look like they got all their stuff together, man, but... That, that's that's why that's why we share that. I just I, I want to clear that up because I, I know I've struggled with that in the past, and you tend to look at other people and go, "Man, everybody's got together. I got these problems. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got problems." So the other question I want to go back to, I want just a quick answer if you can. Uh, where does your positive mindset come from? If it's not a quick answer, go ahead and just let us know. Go ahead. Well, I agree with you. Mine comes from my faith. You know, um, I've, I've said this before in this podcast, my, I believe in Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That is where I get my strength. That is where I get my positive attitude. And, and I would love to say that every day of that walk is perfect and it's not a hundred percent. If you've listened to any of our other episodes, you'd be like that dude is a Christian. <laughs> like, yes, I am. Right. Okay. I'm a an real imperfect, one. real sinner. Yeah, okay? real one. yeah. Yeah. An okay. actual one. Not, not one that just goes to church. Not a fair. Um, yeah. Right. Better. So. But, but the truth is, I mean, like when, when you're hitting those times, you know, I'm like any other person. I mean, I, I've, I've gotten off track with those putting in the positive in that part of my life and, you know, being in the word or being in a prayer, or being in an association, you know, with, with a group of people that believe the same way. And again, this is not pushing anything on anybody else. I hope everybody has something that is similar to that, if not that, which I would urge you to check out. Um, but even just recently, there's been things that have been very uh, challenging things. And you go, okay, I'm just not strong enough to do this on my own. Like, so how do I get that strength? And for me, it's always getting back to that relationship. It's always putting more focus on that relationship. We talked about it, you know, this week, even just getting up earlier. I'm getting up like an hour and a half earlier than I have been just to have prayer time, just to have time in the word you know, like real, not just checking it off the list, you know, so I can say, Hey, I read a passage or whatever. It's like real time, uh, that's helping me grow. And man, it's, it's a game changer, you know, it really is. So. Those ones share. Yeah. So mine's, mine's probably just clarity of mind. I do that through physical activity. Um, I, I stay positive because I, I stay with that bounce. You know, I've, I've got certain energy level keeps, keeps me positive. And, and I think I lean on humility a lot. I mean, I, I could say faith too, uh, but I don't, I don't, um, just, just for the sake of giving other, other, you know, unique answers and stuff. But, um, I, I lean on humility a lot and I leaned on that kind of growing up. Like it was just, it was just the guy that I was, I, I would rather be the guy in the room, you know, making everybody laugh, uh, than you know, be the guy in the room that's kind of the bump on the log kind of thing. So, 
Um, I think I, I, I embraced that early on in life. And I think if you can't laugh, and you don't have a sense of humor. Um, you should try it. It's uh, right. it's pretty neat. Uh, laughing, laughing is good for your health and stuff like that. But I, I, I love that aspect of things, man. Watching people laugh and, and, and cutting up and joking and stuff like that. That's, that's my MO. Like, uh, you know, I, I, I love it, but that, that, and, and being able to let stuff roll off your back, you know, like sometimes you just, you gotta be, you gotta be willing to go, Oh, okay. You know, and I'm nowhere near as good as you are about that Wilson, but like uh, somebody could come up to you and say, you're the world's biggest piece of shit and you'll amount to nothing. You'd be like, Oh, okay. You want a hug? <laughs> you want a hug? <laughs> yeah. You want I'll get some of this shit on you. Yeah. Is that a tennis ball? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Throw the ball. Did you say shit? I didn't shit. I didn't shit. Sorry, I wasn't I paying shit. attention to the squirrel back there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what'd you say? Oh, I'm in a whole. Yeah. When people come to me negative wise, I am in a totally different world. Yeah, my, yeah. My I'm eyes on the just beach. Glaze over. Like, yeah. I'm, Dude. I'm out. Yep. So sorry. I'm, I just went on vacation. I'm sorry. What'd you say? You yeah. know, it's the exact same thing. Do you want a hug? I love yeah. it. <laughs> you want a hug? I love it. Damn, bro. I love it. That's awesome. I think my positivity comes from I'm kind of like Josh. It's 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 within. You know, um, I, I'm I don't I don't practice a lot of religion, um, but I am spiritual. Um, I am. I don't. I think mine mine comes from activity. I think it, my a lot of my positivity comes from. Um, hear myself say that I'm going to, I'm doing this and it, I know, and it is humility, you know, cause I know I'm like, I'm not the best, but motherfucker one day I'm going to be, you know? <laughs> so and that's, and that's where a lot of that comes from. Just you know? the way you say it. Yeah, yeah. Humility. And then he turned into shat. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> humble shat. Humble shat. Humble, humble, humble shat. Humble humble shat. shat. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> me, and my, me and my brother talk about humble brag all the time. Like, yeah, man, I was um, pretty much a big deal. You know? Yeah. But uh, but uh, now humility you know. is at the top of your yeah. list of accomplishments. <laughs> yeah. right. No, but that's that's my thing. I was like, I'm not the you know, you're not the best, but one day you're gonna be, you know. And uh, and yeah, I do say it like that every morning. Oh. So at exactly the same way. You have the girl in the background that goes, Shut yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's her candy needs to do in the next video when she's going around the corner, you're like, oh, yeah. bad, watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> have her say it in the yeah, background. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. No, but it is. It a lot of it comes from within and and and, and curbing those voices like we talked about earlier. That's true. Um it's good, sir. On twenty two, it's true. <laughs> so, but it, yeah, that, I mean, yeah, you, uh, this within and, and humility, like kind of what Josh said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, perfect. Uh, for me, uh, faith for sure. Uh, just to echo what Cameron said, and uh, also just a hope for a better tomorrow. I leverage hope probably more than most people because when you are in a very dark spot and you have no nothing to lean for, you have to have hope that it's going to be better tomorrow. And uh, I think that anybody who's in a bad spot mentally negative, whatever circumstances you're in right now, I think you should just develop a, a hope that tomorrow is going to be better than today. So we are, uh, we're going to be wrapping up. Uh, in wrapping up, I want to kind of leave you guys with some thoughts. I want you to really be truthful. Uh, when you hear this, I want you really to think about it. I want you to recognize the negative thoughts as they're created in your mind because you're putting them there. And I want you to get rid of them by replacing them with positive thoughts and a po- with a positive attitude. That's step one. Step two, change your thinking from negative to positive. As soon as you ha- uh, capture that negative thought and start that, that start to creep into your mindset, replace it. Stop thinking about what could go wrong and start thinking about what could go right. And three, practice e- expecting positive outcomes. Your future isn't set in stone. And since it isn't, You can create what you want by the way you think. The more you tend to think negative, the more things will go wrong. But the more you think positive, the more things will go right. So thank you guys for listening. Please share with us your thoughts, what you liked, what you disliked, or how this might be helping you. Hopefully it is. And if this is something that's helping you, it's now your responsibility to share it with others. Follow us on social media platform, any one of them you choose. We're on all of them. Uh, And our website is shepherdsofmen.com shepherdsof.net. We look forward to hearing about how we have improved your positive mindset. Until then, go become.